The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. This is a course about paradox. The idea is to start with a number of philosophical problems that seem intractable at first and see what can be done with them when we think rigorously about them and when we bring all the powerful tools that logicians have developed uh, into the picture. One example of a paradox is infinity. So people tended to be perplexed by infinity because of problems like the following. So take on the one hand the prime numbers, and on the other hand, the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. There is a sense in which there are more natural numbers than prime numbers, because uh, all of the prime numbers are natural numbers, and then there's more. But on the other hand, you can pair up the natural numbers and the prime numbers. You just assign 0 to the first prime number, and 1 to the second prime number, and two to the third, and so forth. So there's this other sense in which there are just as many prime numbers as natural numbers. And people tended to think that because of this, where infinity began, a uh, so sensible argument ended. Uh, so one, one of the things we try to do in the course is to tame the infinite. I divide the class in sessions of two kinds. So each week there's two sessions, and I see the first session as an inspirational one. So the idea is to uh, brainstorm, to uh, put ideas on the table and get people to participate and see what people think. And the second session of the week is an effort to bring things together. So people will have to have completed a problem set by then. And what we do is try and get down to details and see what we can make of the progress we made in the first session. So one way in which I teach the course differently is that participation is key. So I don't plan my lectures very precisely in advance. What I do is think of a number of interrelated topics that we might talk about, and then just see what the students want. Students are interested in one thing, that's where I go. If someone was thinking about taking this course independently, one thing I would recommend is that they use the various puzzles the syllabus focuses on as doors into larger subfields of philosophy. So that, for example, when they think about infinity, that they then go on uh, to find a textbook about the infinite and learn more about that. Or that when we consider paradoxes to do with truth, that they then uh, go and find a text on the philosophy of language and think more about that. 